Problem three, homework number four. I'm going to work in an example similar to this one on a scratch piece of paper. So you might follow along and do the same kind of thing. So these outputs are X, Y, and Z, labeled on the diagram as X, Y, and Z. All right, the example that I'm working is different than the one that you're looking at right there. On problem three, this is a, a different example. So it kind of looks the same because it's, I got three gates there, but I picked different ones for this example. So what you can do is say, let's call this output X, this one over here Y. So you could say that you know this is X, or you can say that it's the output of the NOT gate. Either way. So just um, shorthand would be just to use the X. And you see that what's being fed into the NOT gate is just the A input. That means that you take whatever A is, whatever the state of A is, and do and write down just the opposite of that. So here we have zeros and then ones. Just the opposite of that is the answer to what X would be. Looking at Y, we see that it's an OR gate and it's the OR between B and C. In that case we only look at columns B and C, so just those last two columns, and refer to a figure in our textbook that gives us the truth tables for logic gates. We're talking about an OR gate, and the figure from your textbook looks like this. And an OR gate basically says that um, if either or both of the inputs are high, then the output is high. So just going by name alone, we're trying to say that the output at Y would be an OR operation between B and C. So any time that either B or C is on, we put a 1 there. So we've got a 0 right there, 1 for this one, 1 for this one, 1 for that one. Looking at B and C here, 0, 1, 1, 1. If either B or C is on, we're putting a 1 in that column. Now, looking at the output Z, which is for an AND gate, you see that the inputs for the AND gate is X and Y. So we need to look at these two columns in order to get what the value of the column should be in Z. Looking back at the um, truth table in our book, we see that an AND gate is a chip that says that if the two inputs are high, the output is also high, otherwise the output is zero. So both A and B inputs have to be on for the output to be on as well. Now our inputs are not A and B anymore, they're actually X and Y, as shown in this diagram. So I need to look at just those two columns. And any time both of those is on, both of those are on. So I have a 0, 1, 1, 1, and zeros all the way down. On the next page, You'll have um, three gates with inputs A and B, outputs X and Y. Notice that the intermediate wires are not labeled in this case, and normally you don't do that. Uh, we were just doing that in the first example. But we could just instead have column headings for each one of these gates. So NOR, NOT, and NAND. Ba and uh, pay particular attention that this um, NAND gate is not a... Um, you know, uh, it's not operating on A and B, it's actually operating on the outputs of the NOT gate and of the NOR gate. So you're going to use these two columns right here to get the NAND column. Also notice that it's pretty easy to get the X and Y columns because X is simply going to be the same as the NAND column and Y is going to be the same 
as not column. This is a problem that is assigned in, assigned in the back of chapter um, four, by the way. All right, down here on the bottom, it's a more complicated circuit. So to help you get started on that, um, I have a table drawn down here. You can pause the video to sketch it in. Uh, inputs A, B, and just A and B, and here are the possible input states. And for every gate that I have up here, I have a column. So I have AND, OR, NOT, NAND, NOR, X, and Y. Be really careful when you do this, and don't just, don't just use A and B every time for the inputs. For example, on this OR gate, you want to use the OR operation for the columns that are labeled with AND, and B. 